Hey y'all, in this video we're going to talk about something called a figurate number. And a figurate number is just a number, usually a sequence of numbers, that can be represented by a geometric arrangement of dots. And you already know examples of figurate numbers, most specifically. The square numbers are figurate numbers because I can take each square number and represent it as a square array of dots. So a one by one is one, a two by two is four, three by three is nine, and four by four is 16. And the reason why we're looking at this now is because we're going to use these figure numbers and some inductive reasoning to uh, help us do something we couldn't do in Algebra 1. Specifically, we're going to use figure numbers to write formulas for quadratic sequences. Now I do have to give a little, little asterisk here um, because the method I'm about to show you does not work for all quadratic sequences, only a subset of them, and specifically the subset that can be factored. And if you remember from Algebra 1, a quadratic function, it's factored into a pair of linear expressions multiplied together. So every quadratic is really a linear times a linear. And so I'm going to use that along with a little bit of geometry and some inductive reasoning to write some quadratic sequences. And I'm going to demonstrate how with three examples. So now as I go through these examples, don't just write down what I am doing. I need you to think about the process that I'm going through and write down some notes about the process so that you can replicate it with different sets of numbers in the future. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so I have this sequence, 10, 18, 28, and 40. And this is going to turn into a series of figure it numbers. Specifically, the figure I'm going to use is a rectangle because I can arrange, hopefully, dots into a series of rows and columns that will form a rectangle. And rectangles have length and width, so I have to think of finding the length and the width which are the two dimensions of the rectangle as they get bigger through the sequence. And of course, I'm going to use the multiplication. So what I'm really doing is I'm going to factor each of these individual numbers. So 10, and I'm going to do this very systematically, okay? So I'm going to go with 1 first. 1 times 10 gives me 10. So I'm hopeful that maybe the rectangle that I'm trying to create out of this number 10 is a 1 by 10 arrangement of dots. Or it might be a 2 by 5 arrangement of dots. Now, those are the only two ways to represent 10 using this method, uh, thinking of 10 as like a, a number of dots that are going to form a rectangle. Either it's a 1 by 10 or a 2 by 5. Okay, so now I'm going to go to 18 and do the same thing. It can be 1 by 18, it could be 2 by 9, or it could be 3 by 6. And I'm doing this systematically, going through each of the integers, uh, finding the factors that apply. So I can have a, for 28, 1 times 28, uh, 2 times 14, 3 does not go into there, uh, 4 does, it's 4 times 7, and 5 and 6 don't, so those are the only combinations I have for 28. And then 40 can be 1 by 40, 2 times 20, no 3, 4 by 10, 5 by 8, and 6 and 7 aren't going to work. And so these numbers here represent all of the possible ways that I can represent these numbers as rectangles. And what I'm trying to find is the pattern where the length increases by a certain pattern and the width increases by a certain pattern. So once again, I'm going to take this systematically. I'm going to start with 1 by 10. And then I'm going to move on to the next column and see if I can start to generate a pattern with these numbers or I can recognize the pattern. So 1 by 18 doesn't help me because that's just 1 times the original sequence. That's completely useless. But 2 times 9 has potential, okay? Because maybe the arrangement is 1, 2, 3, 4. And if that's the case, it'd be 10, 9, 8, 7. So if 2, 9, 1, 10, and 2, 9 are the combo I need, then there has to be a 3, 8 and 28, and there is not. Okay, so that's not a combination that works for me. So then I do 1, 10, and 3, 6. Okay, so I think, okay, if the pattern is 1 by 10 and then 3 by 6, 
and knowing that I have to only use linear little patterns, so I'm going to only look at how things increase by addition or decrease by subtraction. Uh, a 1 to a 3 is a plus 2, which means I need a 5 over here, which I don't have. So this 1 by 10 is not how this starts, okay? So I have to go to 2 by 5. 2 by 5 dropping to 1 to 18 doesn't really make sense. 2, 5, and 2, 9 doesn't help either because all that does is it makes me look at the pattern 5, 9, 14, and 20, which is just half of this, and that's, that's useless. 2, 5, 3, 6. Okay, looks promising. If it does start 2, 5, then 3, 6, then the next number has to be 4, 7, and then 5, 8, which I have. So I have found the rectangular arrangement I need. So really, this sequence of numbers is a set of rectangular numbers. This is uh, starts with uh, the 2 by 5, so like 2 rows, 5 columns, 3 rows, 6 columns, 4 rows, 7 columns, 5 rows, 8 columns. Now I'm not actually going to draw the rectangle because that's not my, my purpose. My purpose is to write a rule for this. So I'm going to arrange everything in a table. Okay, and it's going to be kind of a long table here. So n remember from sequences is the term number. This is the first, second, third, fourth term. So I have my table there. And a sub n are my actual sequence values. 10, 18, 28, and 40. So all I did was I wrote down the values I have from the sequence and the term number that correlates to it. So now I'm going to split this into two pieces. Now one half is going to have the first number in each of these arrangements. So two, three, four, five. And the other column is going to have this other number here. So three, six, oh sorry not three, five, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And so now my goal is to basically just find the rule for this column and then find the rule for that column. So what I've done is I've turned my quadratic into two linear sequences which are much easier to deal with. So I'm going to ignore all of this and I'm going to think, okay, how do I turn a 1 into a 2? The same rule turns a 2 into a 3. Same rule turns a 3 into a 4. Same rule turns a 4 into a 5. That's quite simple. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take n and I'm going to add 1 to it. So this column here is really just this column, the term number plus one, okay? So now I'm gonna ignore that. And I'm gonna look at how to turn a one to a five, a two into a six, a three into a seven, and a four into an eight. Well, that's an n plus a four. Okay, so now what that means is this 40 came from multiplying these two things together. So the final rule is gonna be n plus one times n plus four equals a sub n. Now I know it seems like I did some kind of crazy math magic, but I really didn't. I just systematically looked at all of the factors and I tried to find a pair of factors that when I split them up into their individual tables created two linear sequences that I could easily write the rule for. Now if you think you understand the process, what I want you to do is pause and try that process out on your own and see if you get the same answer that I do. So same deal, I'm going to first step take each of these individual numbers and come up with all the possible factors that exist for them. So this is a 1 by 9 or it could be a 3 by 3 and that's the only factor sets that I have for 9. And 24 has quite a bit more so I have a 1 by 24, a 2 by 12, a 3 by 8 or a 4 by 6 and then 45 can either be a 1 by 45 2 does not go into 45 so I can skip 2 um, 3 15 4 doesn't uh, 5 by 9 and that's it and then 72 I'm just gonna skip for now because I kinda think I see what's going on here I have a 1 by 9 a 2 by 12 and a 3 by 15. 
So the first number is just 1, 2, 3, and for 72 it would be 4, right? And then 9, 12, 15, this would be 18, if this actually works. So if I take 18 and I multiply it by 4, I get 72. So I know this is the combination of factors that I'm going to use for this process. Now I remember that I am relating the term number in this type of formula to the term value. Term number here is 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 1 was a 9, 2 is a 24, 3 is 45, and 4 is 72. And my goal is to figure out the general rule, which is a sub n. Okay, so now I'm going to place my factors. So the first number goes first, in my case, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is an easy enough pattern to find. It's simply just actually the term number. And then this one is 9, 12, 15, 18. And I have to do a little bit more with this one. And I know it's linear because I'm adding 3 each time. So that means my rule has a slope of 3. So I know it's 3n, but 3n doesn't work, right? Because 3 times 1 is 3, not 9. 3 times 2 is 6, not 12. 3 times 3 is 9 and not 15, right? So, but uh, I notice that if I add something, I can make it work. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 6 gives me 9. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 6 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 6 is 15. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 6 is 18. That means that this one is 3n plus 6. And therefore, the answer that I am looking for is a sub n equals n times 3n plus 6. Now for this final example, we are going to use a very famous set of numbers called the triangular numbers. And of course these numbers are called triangular because I can arrange them into an arrangement of dots, uh, like one dot and then one, two, three dots, and one, two, three, four, five, and then the next row has four more and then five more and six more, which is how I know it's quadratic, right? I'm adding two, adding three, adding four. Um, and so I know I can use this process to find uh, the the rule for this particular sequence. And so I'm going to start off by finding my factors. And these numbers are pretty small, so it's easy to find the factors. I have 1 by 1 and 1 by 3. And now I run into a problem. Because these two numbers don't have any other factor combinations for me to find a, a pattern. It's 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 6, 1, 10, which is literally just 1 times the original sequence. So this does not work. I can't use the process. Oh no, what am I going to do? Well, first, I'm going to remember that these are triangular numbers. And the last time I did this, I had a set of rectangular numbers. Right? The premise is I'm using a rectangle, not a triangle. So if I think about the area formula of a triangle, it's really just 1 half base times height. And like, what's base times height? The similar to? Oh, it's similar to length times width. So in essence, the triangular numbers are really just half of a rectangle, right? So this is like half of a rectangular array. So why not I just turn it into a rectangular array of numbers by just doubling all of these? And then, hmm, I wonder if my factor trick is going to work. So 2, 6, 12, 20. So now let's see if I can double the sequence and if I can use this trick. Now the thing is, is if I double all the numbers and the trick ends up working, then the answer I get is not going to be for this sequence. It's going to be for twice the sequence. So if I choose to double, then at the very end, I have to divide my rule by two. Okay, so let's try this. Two is one times two. It's prime, so I really can't find any other combinations. Uh, this is 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Okay, so those are the only combinations, and I know it's not going to be 1 times 6. So the only hope I have, if this is 1 by 2, 
and then if this is 2 by 3, this first number is increasing by 1 each time, so this has to be 3. The second number is increasing by 1 each time, so this has to be 4. And oh look, that works. And then 3 times 4 would turn into 4 times 5 for this one, and therefore it works. So oh, hey, check it out. Doubling the sequence that didn't work, uh, that was triangular, it made the, the factors that I needed. So once again, I'm going to do my table. Remembering that when I write rules for sequences, what I am doing is tying the term a sub n to the number of the term with the formula. So I have the first term, which is, remember, we're doing the double, so 2. The second term, which is 6. The third term, which is 12. And the fourth term, which is 20. And then, of course, the nth term, which is a sub n, the rule I'm looking for. All right, now write out my factors. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, which is the same thing as the number, so that's just n. So I have half my rule. Let's figure out the other half, which is not that much more challenging. It's 2, 3, 4, 5 which is just n plus 1. So this sequence, 2, 6, 12, 20, has a formula that's n times n plus 1, but that's not the answer to the actual question I asked because the actual sequence I need is half of this. And so if I have the rule for this sequence and I want half of it, then I take the rule and I divide it by 2. Okay. So this just happens to be the formula that generates all of the triangular numbers.